late enough. So Mercy Rob background is in Catholic education, marketing, communications, and enrollment. She joined the Catholic school's office at the Diocese of Juliet in Illinois in 2018 after a 20 year career as an executive director of marketing and communications at Benedictine University. So uh, Mercy, is there something cool about you that's not in this bio? Something interesting? Um, I am a golden doodle lover. And uh, we have, we're on our second golden doodle right now who just was escorted into the den to, who has, has to not disturb me. I made my husband swear that he would keep the dog quiet because she's a barker. So hopefully she will remain calm while, while, we, uh, while we go through this today. All right. Well, thank you, Mercy, and the floor You're is welcome. yours. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, hopefully. Let's see. This is gonna work. Oh, and I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, for people who are have been asking, every presentation that we've done so far uh, has been recorded, including this one. And I will post the link uh, shortly uh, with the, um, it's a Google Drive link. And then from there, you can view the videos from the presentations, download the presentation files, watch it and listen to your heart's delight. Thank you, John. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you again so much. Thank you everyone for uh, participating today. And thank you, John, for hosting and facilitating all of this. Um, our audience today, I believe, has teachers. That was my understanding. Um, and John, if you could, since I, I also cannot see the chat as we're going along, if you can feel free to interrupt with questions at any time. Um, so, but since our audience, and we're talking about teachers, and our audience includes teachers, I want to extend a very heartfelt Happy Teacher Appreciation Week to all of you. And thank you for everything you do for our students and our schools. So appropriately, I thought that we should begin uh, with a prayer in honor of our patron saint of teachers, St. Elizabeth Seton. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Father, you called Elizabeth Seton to educate your children. Inspire us by her example to find your will in the present moment. Through her prayers, may we learn to teach others how to love like you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and teacher, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. So this is a quote that, um, I think speaks volumes about um, what our teachers do and what we do as educators. Teachers do have an awesome responsibility. And, and now you're here today learning that you also have a role, a critical role in enrollment management, which helps your school thrive. And I know it can feel overwhelming, all of the things that we have to do inside and outside of the classroom. But I'm going, hopefully, to show you today what you are already doing every day that makes you a member of your school's enrollment management team. So you may not realize it, but you already are a member of that team. So I'd like to begin with a quick game using the alphabet. <laughs> Seems appropriate with teachers, I thought. Um, you may have seen this before. And if everyone um, would unmute yourself, since I cannot see the chat bar, um, we're gonna go through all the letters. So um, I want you to take a look at these letters and see if you know what brand they represent or product they represent, but they should be mostly brands. So let's begin with A. Anybody have any ideas what the A stands for? All. All. Okay, all, correct, B. Bubble delicious. Oh, very good. <laughs> C. Campbell. Good. D. Downey. Nope. <laughs> Denny's. Nope. Oh. Uh. Dawn. Very appropriate. Dawn. Dawn, Dawn soap. Something we should all be using a lot of these days, right? <laughs> uh, e. Ego. 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 F. Friendly. They can't hear you. Burritos. Burritos, yes. Burritos. I love it. Do we have a little helper guessing these? <laughs> uh, G. Gatorade. 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 Mm. H. <laughs> this one's tough. Hotels.com? <laughs> nope. Hebrew National. Hot dogs. Ah, yeah. Oh. 
Hot dogs. I. Icy. 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 Yep. J. Jello. 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 Mm -hmm. K. Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Kool -Aid. <laughs> L. I saw. Another thing we should be using a lot of right now. Yes. Find it. <laughs> yeah, you can't find it anywhere. Then Clorox. Um, M. 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 Yep. N. No. Vanilla this is another wafers. tough one. Vanilla wafers. Vanilla yep. wafers. Ah. Yep. O. Oreo. O's. P. P. S. Yep. Q. Quaker. Tips. Q tips. Q tips. Sorry. Yep. R. Reese's. Yep. A lot of candy in this list, isn't there? <laughs> S. Starburst. 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 Yep. T. Tide. Tide. Yep. Tide. Oh, okay. Yes. U. <laughs> Use hard. Oh. Uncle Ben's. Uncle Ben's. That's oh. nice. V. V8. 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 Yeah. Correct. Oh. Good. Uh, good job. W. With. Oh, With. very good. That one's another hard one. Um, X. X mix. Extra. Extra. Yep. That's a tough one. Y. York. 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 Yep. And Z. Zero. 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 Good nope. Job. Zest. Oh, zest. Oh, yeah. Zest. zest. Uh, what is zero? Candy, candy bar. bar. <laughs> candy bar. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what, is that a Florida thing? I've never heard that. <laughs> uh, Lorena right. says that there's nothing organic in, in this list. Uh, <laughs> no, no, nothing organic and nothing healthy. And nothing we can find in the stores right now, really, of these <laughs> cleaning products. Well, thanks, everyone. That was good. You guys did really good. So I wanted to take us through that exercise to show you and to illustrate how teachers represent the brand of your school as much as these letters do to their organizations. You may be wondering how. Well, you're center stage in the classroom. You're on display. You're presenting every day. Um, you're the product. You're behind the scenes in school operations. It's not just what you do in the classroom, but behind the scenes to help the principal and work with parents. Your teachers, observe, your, the teachers are observers and reporters and responders. You're running around the entire school and you know <laughs> a lot of what's happening behind the scenes. So you get what's happening and you, and you get what your school is all about. And because of that, you are a primary influencer um, to the experience and the engagement um, that your students and families have, not only for recruitment, but also retention and ensuring that those students stay students and you keep those families year after year. Your influence in enrollment management is real. Um, we do, uh, I think Mike talked in the last session about the importance of parent satisfaction surveys. We believe in that too, and we do those also. These two comments are from our parent satisfaction survey that we did last year that included two, I thought, very telling comments about the impact of our teachers. There are so many engaging and enthusiastic teachers at the school. They breathe life into the curriculum and are excellent at identifying children's strengths and weaknesses and addressing both. They're able to bring out the best in every student. That's the kind of thing we want to hear. We want to hear that about our teachers and they're enthusiastic, they're engaging, they're making my student better and bringing out the best. That's what we want. The first year experience with our child's teacher is why we will be signing her up next year. That is an enrollment manager's dream mm -hmm. comment right there. If it continues mm -hmm. to be like this, she will continue her education here. I don't think anything sums it up any better than that of the impact that, it, that a teacher can have and how that impacts a family's decision on where to send their child. More recently, in this time of remote learning, we're calling it at-home learning here in the Diocese of Joliet, I had made a post a couple weeks ago on social media, and this was on our Facebook page, and really it was a post to thank the parents more than anything. It wasn't supposed to be about our teachers. It was us thanking the parents 
for them going above and beyond and stretching outside their comfort zone and, and all that they're doing to help their children continue to learn at home. Because again, this is a partnership between our schools and the families. And they're doing things they never dreamed they'd be doing in a million years to help their students learn. And by thanking the parents, surprisingly got a number of comments in reply which we don't we don't get a lot of engagement on our social media it's been something i've been trying to build over the past year so i was incredibly surprised and proud that we had uh, this these numbers of comments this is sadly it's four but that's kind of a lot for us um <laughs> for for families to comment on um, and they said some really good things. To, so to see that um, sponsor, or posted on social media made me very excited. I especially loved the dancing Snoopy. I thought that was, that was great. But it was just it's nice to hear people comment about, the post wasn't even about our teachers. It was thanking the parents that they felt compelled enough to comment publicly. Um, I, I thought it was great. And along those lines, lines also during this time of remote learning, we did a survey. So speaking of surveying our parents, we didn't do a parent satisfaction survey this year, but we did send a survey out to families. I think it was the end of March. So we were two weeks into at home learning just to, you know, when it was new to take a pulse, see how things were going, what, what they liked, what they didn't like, what can we improve on? Um, and, and these are just some examples of of what our families told us. I liked that the teachers informed us of their high expectations and the kids liked how each teacher told them exactly what was due and when. So this parent commented not only on their experience and opinion, but also commented on what their kids had to say. And that's so important because the kids are who are coming home. Now granted, we're all at home, but when we were back in the school buildings, they come home and they tell mom and dad what happened at school that day. And they're talking about the teacher and their and their experiences in the classroom and that's what parents are basing their decisions on the next one the teachers and staff have been amazing with communication and providing work for my children to continue learning i'm beyond impressed with the quality of work responsiveness and support just another reason why my family loves saint dennis school and community well you know that student and that family is going to say stay they're they're not a retention risk they're going to stay enrolled because we've been communicating We've continued our end of the bargain of our deal. We are going to continue teaching and your child is going to continue learning in our schools. We have high quality, we're responsive, we're supporting the family and this family feels it and knows it. And that's great to see. I would love, I would like to thank the teachers and staff for pulling this together so quickly. This is a learning curve for all of us reminds us how very fortunate we are to have such wonderful and truly caring teachers. Again, that says it all. The family, the student, most likely is not having that experience in the public school. And what we're trying to do in the Diocese of Joliet is really share that story and share that message, especially during this that time of at-home learning, about what we're doing to keep communicating, keep engaged, um, not to say they're not getting that in the public school, but we need to be telling the story of all the things that we're doing right and doing, doing well. And we've heard anecdotally that we're doing so much more than the public schools in our area. And that really means a lot for the families. That that's what they're looking for. They don't feel they're getting a lot out of it in the public schools. So we just need to keep telling our story. And I, and I know Mike talked about this earlier too. Not only are they giving us their feedback, but they're telling their family and friends. They are telling everyone they come in contact with. Satisfied customers will tell one to three other people about their positive experience. But dissatisfied customers, they tell seven to 10 others. I think Mike said five, five to 10, you know, anywhere in that range. If you're unhappy, you tell more people about your unhappiness than you do when something is going well. Um, and that's a scary statistic, but what do you do when the comments aren't positive? You, you need to do more things to get more good ones. Um, I didn't share with you the negative comments that we got, or the critical comments, I don't like to say negative, but the critical comments we got about our teachers and our survey. Um, overwhelmingly, they were positive, but we did have some not so great feedback received. So what do you do to get more positive ones? Do more things that will generate um, 
more excitement, more engagement, and more, you know, feel good feedback. Um, and there are so many things that teachers are already doing. Teachers, you have a natural ability to work with students and parents. That's what makes you a good teacher. If you weren't good at that, this would not be your profession. You already build a positive relationship with your students. And that one-to-one -one relationship is a key factor in retaining mm -hmm. students. Like I, I said, they're gonna go home and mm -hmm. talk to their parents about the impact you had on their life that day in school. And parents like to hear that. They like to see when their teachers are present and engaged at school events. You, you support their extracurricular activities. You're at band concerts and, and athletic events and science fair and all of those things. And even in this time of virtual, you know, where we're all remote, you're Zooming with them and you're checking in with parents and just being present and active and engaged shows them that you're vested in the school and that them being exposed to you, and again, going back to the first slide, you're living the brand. Your level of engagement and enthusiasm um, embodies the brand of the school, and that's you're the you're the product in their eyes. Um, a lot of times, more so than the education their kids are getting, it's that experience because you are with their babies every day, um, and that communication with the parents via your student information system. We use School Speak, so we. Uh, that's how we're doing all of our remote learning. I mean, we're using other tools as well, like Class Dojo and Seesaw and ClassNote, but we're sending assignments and doing a lot um, and communicating with parents through SchoolSpeak, making sure you're keeping those lines of communication open. And now more than ever, it is so important and something I've been um, emphasizing with our principals and it should make sure that their teachers are keeping those lines of communication open because that is what's going to get us through this bump in the road um, of this remote learning and, and keep our schools vibrant is maintaining those relationships because community has never been more important than it is now. There's other things that teachers can be doing and you may already be doing some of these. Um, a, a tactic I, I like to see is sending good news notes home at least four times a year, at least quarterly. Um, we all know because we've had those experiences where sometimes you only hear from the teacher when little Johnny has been bad or mm -hmm. little Janie has, is doing very poorly on something. You do not want that to be the only time a family hears from you as a teacher. You want to be telling them all the good things that their student is doing, all the things they're learning, the ways they're growing, what they're experiencing and exploring. Um, you need to share all of those positive things with them so that when they think of you, they're not thinking negative, negative. I only hear from the teacher when my, when my child is misbehaving or is doing poorly on something. Um, keeping a win list, how you win every day and how you are making a difference in the life of your students. That is so important. Teachers have a very difficult job. And right now, it's more difficult than ever, especially if you've got young kids at home. My sister is a first grade teacher <laughs> and she's got two elementary age children at home and she is burned out by preparing everything for school and then also trying to teach her two little kids um, mm -hmm. everything. And it's just, it's overwhelming. And sometimes you get lost in it and it helps to have those positive things to remind yourself of all the things that you're doing right and the impact that you're making and being able to share those things out for how you are being successful and how you are continuing the engagement and the learning. Those things help sustain you and will help motivate you to keep going through it all. Um, I also encourage you to think about three things that you could do before the end of this year. I know the school year will be wrapping up soon, um, but what are th three things that you can do before the end of this year that you think will help um, impact your retention for next year to get those students back in the fall? Um, and think about what new things you might wanna try next school year, whether we're still remote learning or if we're back, you know, hopefully all back in the classroom. What three things do you think that you can do that, that will help? Um, another thing that's very popular, and I know Mike talked about this also in the last session, is social media and the importance of social media. We encourage our teachers to um, post, tweet, share, follow, 
tell anyone and everyone how great your school is, whether it's in person or on social media. And right now we're all communicating um, digitally in so many ways. Our teachers um, use social media in a variety of ways inside the classroom, outside the classroom. Um, but we have one school in particular, St. Joseph and Lockport, who is a Twitter school. All of their teachers are on Twitter, the principal's on Twitter, that's the culture she's created in that school. And that's one of the primary ways that they um, communicate. They communicate in many other ways, but they are very active on Twitter and telling their brand story and their school story on Twitter. And parents are responsive and are following along. Um, we have a teacher, Michelle Ray at that school, she's the music teacher. She does a little video and celebrates the birthday of every single student in that school and does a little video. The parent, other teachers in the school are paying attention. So is the, are the parents. So it was Sammy's birthday. Sammy's dad wrote back, thanks, Mrs. Ray, with a cute little picture of him. We've had a lot of schools doing these types of birthday things. We've had a lot of really good engagement um, that way with the teachers. Uh, the principal at that school. I had dinner, you know, my dinner with the science fair. We had so much to celebrate. They worked so hard to get here. And then a dad of one of the kids talks about his favorite part was when they prayed as a family. That's again, just showing the engagement that how important that is to have those relationships and have an engagement. Um, e even on Twitter, it makes a difference. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Rita Pearson or have seen mm -hmm. this video. I encourage you to take some time to watch it. We're not going to take time to do it today. It's, a, uh, it's about seven and a half minutes long. Um, but it is a very inspiring and uplifting um, seven minutes of your time that talks about the importance of that engagement and connection and, and how important that is to a child and a student and how teachers are that role model and can provide that inspiration because not everyone gets that at home, unfortunately. But it's just, it's a very good um, watch, very inspiring, but again, just talks about how important it is to make sure that you are engaging and connecting with every single student in your classroom and, all, and your families at school. Um, and really, it all boils down to customer service and Catholic education. We don't think that what we do um, is customer service. We're educators and our job is to teach and the student's job is to learn, um, but it is customer service. It's a commitment and that customer commitment to customer service is a commitment to enrollment management because everyone plays a vital part in all students and families feeling welcome at the school, whether it's the custodian, the secretary, the school nurse, top down, everyone in the school has a role. Um, so it isn't just the teachers. It's not just the principal. It's not just the marketing volunteer that you have because most likely you don't have a marketing person on staff but maybe you do i know here in the diocese of joliet we don't um maybe only three of our schools have someone who's on the payroll the rest are school board volunteers it's the school secretary it's a teacher it's the track coach it's a variety of things and everyone has a role um you promote the catholic mission of the church and of the school and you portray it all the time in your role, by your, in your role as a Catholic school educator, you are promoting the mission of the church. Um, I know uh, Mike talked about this earlier too, about um, do you as teachers, do your teachers talk positively about the school outside of school? Be visibly enthusiastic about where you, where you work and show your excitement for your school. Let your face speak what's in your heart. People, they, you know, when you speak about your school, are you smiling? Are you happy? Are you enthusiastic? Are you telling a great story? Or are you kind of reserved and, and don't want to talk about it? Um, that sends a message. And again, you are the brand of your school and how you carry yourself and the words you use um, that all speaks about, you know, that says a lot about the school that you're representing. Um, and, and remembering that every interaction can build or damage the brand of your school. Um, when you're at the grocery store and you're wearing your St. Pius sweatshirt and you're cussing out so-and-so, <laughs> you know, that's not, not, not a good representation. Um, so just remember whether you're wearing the brand of your school, your school name or not, um, and, and I know that's hard, but every interaction can build or damage the brand of your school. And just remember, it will come back. It will come back in parent comments. It could come back on social media on a comment. 
Um, but that word of mouth is so important and that's what um, it helps build it, you know, build that brand for the school. So um, one of the things that we do here in the Diocese of Joliet um, is we do provide talking points for, and it's not just talking points, but these are um, message points that we believe in as a diocese that we communicate to our principals and our teachers and to our families and throughout our, our, our school communities. Um, the teachers can take these and they can kind of take a temperature check to see if what they're doing and what they're saying is representative of what we're saying um, that our schools, what you can find in our schools, what we're saying and doing. So we uh, rely very heavily on our mission values and benefits of what it means to get a Catholic education in the Diocese of Joliet. Um, so we find that this is helpful for the teachers also to, to be just mindful of that and making sure kind of as a checkpoint that they are um, doing these things that are aligned with the brand. Um, sharing su success stories in that regard. Um, we provide, these are uh, pieces from our values, what, what we value. Um, I'm committed to incorporating faith into the classroom. Well, how? So we're saying, giving an example, but that's a great opportunity for a teacher to say, you know, I'm a Catholic school educator and this is how I'm different. And this is how, you know, what I do, how that makes a difference. Um, how I'm committed to balancing challenging courses with a nurturing environment. An example of, of how you're doing that in the classroom, how you collaborate with families. Um, I don't think there can be any greater collaboration than right now in this time of, of remote learning where we're sending lessons home, but relying on mom and dad, especially with the little ones, to kind of implement that and, and get that work done and making sure that learning is continuing at home. So being able to, sh to share those success stories, I think is, is really important. I um, mean, it's important to share those stories with each other, with your school's marketing staff and principals so they can be sharing the news and with your Catholic schools office. So sending that information to, to John for him to share out about all the great things that are happening in the school and in the classroom. Um, you know, I said, we have 47 schools. I can't be everywhere at once and I'm not everywhere at once. And I do rely on uh, news from the schools. I follow all of their social media. I share from the schools, but I'm also doing a lot of digging and always have my, my eyes and ears open um, for great examples of what's going on in our schools, especially what's on brand. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of messaging around our mission, values, and benefits, and I'm always looking for examples from the schools that, that, that demonstrate those attributes that we're saying we do. Um, and it's important to do it on social media. Follow and tag your diocese. We have a very active Catholic Schools Office page. Like I said, we follow, um, I, I follow all of the schools in our diocese. Uh, we also follow the diocese page and other offices within the diocese to try and share and just kind of build that network, that ministry network amongst the diocese, but among the schools as well. And we're lucky that we have a very, we have very collaborative principals and schools and they are supporting each other. So I do love when I see um, the different schools supporting others, whether it's just a congratulations or a show of support, they do challenges amongst themselves sometimes. So it's just nice to see that overall Catholic school community. Um, and that's something to do um, with teachers as well, especially during this time um, we've started learning communities amongst all of our schools, um, grade level learning communities. So we've been doing Zoom calls with all of the first grade teachers in the diocese, all of the religion teachers in the diocese. It's an opportunity for networking and professional development, but it also gets them to know one another and learn from each other. And it just helps build that overall community. And I think that helps make our, our school stronger. And those are certainly good things um, to be sharing and, and talking about. Um, I think, I feel like I went through this really fast. I knew it wasn't going to be too long, um, but I want to thank you all for everything you do inside and outside of the classroom. Um, because of you, we drive enrollment to our Catholic schools, and it, that's so important. The word of mouth from your students and families really makes your role critical in enrollment management, and I hope that I um, 
that that this was demonstrated that and showed you some ideas about uh, your important role in that regards. Um, I also I love this um, came from one of our principals that engineers make buildings, artists make paintings, scientists make rockets, and teachers make them all. And Catholic teachers make saints. And mm -hmm. that's what makes us different in Catholic education. And, um, and that's what makes you different as a Catholic school teacher. And those are the types of things that parents want to hear. And um, what makes you do, it's just so important to the success of our school. So I am happy to take questions or just engage in any type of discussion that you would like, even if it's just to get some intel on Father Belmonte, I'm happy to share. <laughs> uh, I'll start off. Uh, I, does everyone in this room know that we'll be getting a new superintendent starting in July? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. I just wanted to see if we were there. Oh yeah, I got a why. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. Father Belanti comes from where Mercy's uh, diocese is located, and I've heard nothing but good things, uh, which to me says that you know expect great things, even more great things to happen here uh, at the diocese of Venice. So you will. He will lead you in a very capable way. He's a visionary. He has a lot of enthusiasm, and you are very lucky to have him. Yeah. One of our principals does want to get the down low. Uh, Rebecca, what do you want to know? <laughs> what would you like to know? He's a Jesuit. Um, he was at, he's been with the Diocese of Joliet for 10 years. Um, he, the man has lived everywhere. He, he has a story for everything. He has lived everywhere. He has just such a breadth of experience. It's, it, it's, who he doesn't know just never ceases to amaze me. I've only had the pleasure of working him for him for about two years, um, but he he just he's he's so smart and intelligent, um, and he's got a great story and a good joke for everything. Um, but he is um, he just wants what's best for our schools, and I know that he's going to do tremendous things um, for you in the diocese of Venice. Awesome. Well, thank you. Anyone else? You're Any questions? No questions. Oh, no surely. questions. <laughs> All right. Well, if you do think of a question, uh, Mercy to put up her email address. You could also email me. I'll, I'll type in mine as well. But uh, I'm just going to step on the soapbox here just for a moment. And I, a few people have already heard me say this, so I apologize. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, when I first started this position, uh, the, one of the first things I did was talk to friends and relatives and, and other coworkers and other people that were just immersed in the marketing field. And I asked them, what books do I need to read? What books do I need to listen to? Who, I, who, who should I follow on YouTube? And I kept getting the same titles over and over again. So I finally went to the library, got an audio book for one of these prestigious authors, all about marketing, supposed to unveil the secrets. Enrollment was going to go up by 5,000% in one year, yada, yada, yada. I got two paragraphs into that book before I stopped it and almost threw it out the window. <laughs> and, it, and it's because of this. Uh, the author states, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, marketing is the most important aspect of any organization. And I find that dead wrong. Uh, it's not marketing, never will be. It's the product or the service that your organization offers that will always be the most important aspect. And in our case, like uh, Mercy said, it, is, it comes down to the teachers and the curriculum. I, I can have the greatest marketing campaign in the world. I can have unlimited money, but if I'm marketing junk, it's only gonna yeah. take a while before the public realizes that this is junk. <laughs> so uh, again, uh, what, what Mercy was saying, what you do f at that level in terms of marketing is far more important in many ways than what I can do at the diocese level. Just you um, showcasing yourself as a Catholic school teacher speaks volumes about our quality of education. And I, I mean, I've done the commercials, you know, I'm working on annual reports and signs and flyers and special programs and special events, but none of those hold a candle to what our teachers do. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for making my job easier by being such incredible people. And thank you for taking the time from your extremely busy schedules uh, to come out here and learn a little bit more about how you play in the role in terms of, of enrollment and marketing uh, for the entire diocese. 
and with that, I stepped down off my step uh, my soapbox. That was a good soapbox, John. <laughs> All right. That was good. <laughs> All right. And and finally, uh, who here is aware of what Jennifer Falestini is doing? Our curriculum coordinator. Oh, those are some awesome face shields you got there. Yes, Jennifer Falestini, our curriculum coordinator. She is started what's called the Camillus Project. She is 3D printing shields, and she's looking for anyone with a 3D printer to join her in this very philanthropic uh, event. Uh, she has the files. She even has her own website and the video, and you can watch it. Um, but we are looking for more people to, to join us. That way we can print as many as we can and, um, excuse me, and uh, show it to, um, um, I'm sorry, to distribute it to our, our the person, the people who are most in need, the people on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. So um, I'm gonna, sorry, I had the file disappear on me. I'll, I'll open it in a moment. But in the meantime, if anyone else has a question, AKA just stall for a minute or two while I get the, uh, the file. Open. <laughs> I just wanna say thank you to the St. Joseph teachers that are here. I see a few of them on today. And I just want a shout out to them for all that they do to create such a positive environment at St. Joe's. So thank you. Are you feeling it this week? It's Teacher Appreciation Week. So are you getting hearing from families? I mean, there, I, everything I'm hearing is parents, this is the year that teachers are going to get appreciated because parents finally have an understanding <laughs> of what it's like to be with their children day after day, all day long at school. Are you, are you seeing that with your parents this year? Very much. Yeah. I've gotten feeling it, just feeling, mm -hmm. just been fabulous. I've gotten some of the nicest notes I've ever received from That's some great. of these parents. Uh -huh. well, she Doesn't that help? Do you feel that that helps motivate you to keep going and help you, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah, very much. why you do what you do? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very much. Especially, you know, at the beginning when it was so overwhelming for everyone. You know, it, it was nice to get the words of encouragement from the parents. Yeah, and I think that really helped when we did our survey, and I don't know if you've done a survey like that of, of your families just to kind of take the pulse, you know, to see where they're at. But I know that um, the principals needed to hear it, but and the fact that it got passed along to the teachers, I know, was helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and really, um, you know, what we found is that the first two weeks were tough. It was, there was a total learning curve. Um, for everyone involved. And then we kind of started to get into the groove and parents, you know, no one's loving it by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but it, we're, everyone's kind of in a groove now. And, um, you know, it, just having that, that feedback and that, that we really are all in this together and are able to respond and adjust things to, to meet the needs on both ends has been really, really impactful. Um, I got a question. This is really for all the teachers here. Um, what it, what would you like to see happen at the diocese level? Is there anything that we can do at the Department of Education to try and make things at least a little bit easier for you? Either, uh, either I know I'm going past tense, but either from the transition to virtual to a live classroom or something that perhaps we can do in the fall if and when we return to the live classroom. Mm -hmm. One. I, I, I can speak for myself. I think that um, the communication between the diocese and the principals and the principals to the teachers has been stellar really with resources and materials and free things and um, go here and lists of things and hitting all of our learning styles as well and being supportive in that where we're at. Um, so as we move forward and we get better at it, um, to keep that up. Um, there's so much more to learn. I think we'll all be better teachers going back in the regular classroom as a result of this. Um, so the, the resources um, and the communication of those resources has been pretty invaluable. Well, if you think of anything, let us know. Also, if you're not, if you have not yet uh, befriended uh, the Diocese of Venice Catholic Schools Facebook page, please do. And like Mercy was saying, send us the good news. Um, um, I'm going to type in my email address, but send it to me directly or tag us on Facebook. Uh, I, I know the principals do a good job at, at posting great things and, and their Facebook uh, pages are pretty much uh, alive and well. 
but I'm sure things get slipped through the cracks. So let us know. Um, you know, and that's a good point, John. You know, I had a lot of a lot of schools say, oh, well, it's on our Twitter. Just pull it down from our Twitter. Okay. Oh, I have 47 schools. Yeah. So I can't, you know, I, I, I spend probably way too much time planning our, our Facebook, but we have such a large community and it's so geographically diverse. Our diocese covers seven counties in Illinois and we have schools in five of them. Um, and, and it's very different. The, the, are very, um, very suburban uh, to very rural is, is our spread in our diocese. Um, and every community is different. And I, I really do rely on the schools just to tell me things and share things with me. So I get emails and texts all the time, which is very helpful because that saves me from having to go dig and find things. Um, every chance I get in front of the principals, I'm asking them, you know, if you've got something extraordinary to share, something great that's going on in your school, please send it to me because there's no way but 47 schools, I can uncover everything there is to uncover. And that's even working with a, a marketing representative um, at their school that everyone's so focused on their thing, sometimes they don't think, oh, well, that would be really good for this or would be really good for that. Um, just having, again, that engagement and having that community together sharing um, really helps spur a lot of other ideas and helps move us all forward. Well, thank you, Mercy. Well, anyone else have any questions, comments? All right. Well, I have one more for the teachers. Um, why did you decide to choose uh, the school that you're in? What, what, drew, what drew you to teach at that particular school? Uh, for myself, I, I went to school there as a child um, in sixth and seventh grade. I had the best teacher ever, Sister Belinda, and because of her, I became a teacher. So it feels good to be home. Great. Anyone else? No? No one wants to say why? <laughs> If someone says I, for the money, I'm going to question it. Because <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> um, for me, it was just, um, I, I actually got, came there just from people that I know. Um, I'd been involved in the school for a long time. My older kids went when they were younger. Uh, my mother taught first grade Catholic school for her whole teaching career for 36 years. So I knew there was no money in it. Hers is even worse than ours. <laughs> and, um, um, but it was just people that I knew that were teaching there and working there that brought me to there. And to me, we're, we were in a very small town. We didn't have any Catholic school options. I come from a family that had gone to Catholic school. I myself went until third grade, up until third grade Catholic school. And I felt that that was really missing. And so as a community, we came together and we kind of, um, spoke about it and we're hoping that this would happen and then as I became a mother it became more important and so as soon as um, the opportunity was there I wanted to be a part of it so that our community could have the Catholic school um, option and so ever since then pretty much since school has started I have been there and just it's been such a blessing to be a part of that and and to have that for our community. 